Hey, what's going on? Happy Friday, everybody. Hopefully everybody had a good week. Man, the weather is fantastic here in Dallas-Fort Worth. And it's about 69, maybe 70 degrees. And it's just really, really wonderful out. Well, I'll tell you what. You know, I've got tonight's video. I've got five adventure motorcycles that, uh, that are, uh, uh, yeah, they're good for touring. But you know what? They're also really good off-road. Stick around. Coming up next. Hey, what's happening, everybody? Hopefully everybody's having a great Friday. It's really nice here in Dallas-Fort Worth. Like I said on the intro, it's about 70 degrees. It's super, super comfortable, man. It's definitely riding weather here in Texas. Um, it's getting really super nice, man. Hey, don't forget, hit that subscribe button if this is your first time. Give us a thumbs up. And don't forget, if you need anything or if you got questions or any of that type of stuff, don't forget 69080V at gmail.com. Hit me up anytime. Also, you check out our website, 69080V.com. Today or tonight's video, um, adventure bikes. I mean, they're kind of hot. They're kind of really picking up steam. And, you know, the thing is, is some people, if you're a new rider, they're not 100% what the difference between an adventure bike and a dual sport bike is. Well, a dual sport bike usually is a lot lighter. It's more made for the off-road. They're more dirt-oriented, like this 690 or a KLR 650 or a DRZ 400. I mean, there's a lot of them out there. But your adventure bikes are bigger. They're twin cylinders, and but they're really made to tour on. So these are adventure touring bikes that are really can get off road and actually you can have some fun on these bikes so if you're in the market or you're thinking about potentially getting a adventure bike maybe one of these five might be the one that you're looking for if you're planning on getting off road and maybe doing some camping or any of that type of stuff Other, more than just say a gravel road is basically what i'm trying to get at the first bike and they're not going to go in any specific order i'm not going to say really one's better than another i'm not biased i love all motorcycles but these five here are really pretty much perfect all the way around for just about everybody that's out there and there's basically one for everybody's budget the first one the africa twin especially you know since they brought it back it's such a great motorcycle it's not too heavy for an adventure touring bike but it's really made with an 18 inch rear rear, uh, rear tire i mean a 21 inch front tire it's really it's it's really set up for the dirt or off-road it can actually get out and it can do some of that fun stuff that you want to do now granted it is a heavy bike you're not going to single track on it you can single track to anything gnarly that you want to do with any bike that's out there depends on how dedicated you truly are to your riding but it's 458 pounds. These are all dry weights, all right? Um, you know, like I said, it's got 4.7 gallons of fuel. It's a six-speed transmission. It's got the look. You're gonna see pictures of every one of these bikes up on the screen. And, uh, but these adventure bikes, every one of them will basically do the business of what you wanna do to get off-road. Nothing too gnarly. But you can if you want to, because I've seen videos of guys that take these things through some crazy, crazy stuff. The next bike, the Triumph Tiger, the XCX. Really cool bike. It's got that triple cylinder motor in there, super smooth on the road, but it's got a 21 inch front. It's got a 17 inch rear. It's not too crazy in price. It's got, basically it's about 452 pounds in weight. You know, it's got a five gallon fuel tank. Most all of these with the Adventure Series type bikes all carry a good little bit amount of fuel, which will allow you to get those miles in if you're touring. But with these bikes, the way that they're set up, they're sort of slender so that you can get them off road. But the Triumph Tiger XC, X, it's not a bad bike. Like I said, it's got the triple. It's in that mid 400 range. 
It's got five gallons of fuel. It's a six-speed transmission so that you can get out, you can ride, and you can actually enjoy yourself when you're touring on that bike. The next bike, it's the one I should have got. I got the Adventure Series, which held about six gallons of fuel, or six, a little over six gallon, the BMW F800. Now, I know they have the BMW F850 right now, and that's pretty much the only one you're going to get at a dealer, but if you can find an old F800 GS, it's such a great bike. 392 in the weight category, and all these are dry again. I don't want people getting on there. I'm going to have the guys that are sitting there going, ah, you're talking, that's dry weight. I get it, man. I get it. Everybody's an expert, but that is the weight before you put the fuel in, and that's okay. It's not a big deal. That's pretty light for an adventure bike. 2117 tire selection, 4.2 gallons of fuel, very slender, and a great bike. It's got BMW's pedigree behind it, and that bike will actually get out very, very reliable, as all of these bikes are reliable for getting out, and you can actually go off-road with these bikes, especially that BMW F800 GS. The next one, and like I said, they're not going in any order, the KTM 790 Adventure R, not the 790 Adventure, but the R, the actual dirt version of that KTM 790. 416 in the pound category, not bad. Uh, you know, it's a 2118 tire selection, 5.3 gallons of fuel at basically 416 plus the gas fuel, that's, man, that's pretty good. That's going to be about 450, 460 pounds. For an adventure bike, man, I'm ta that's, what, that's what we're talking about. That's exactly where you want to be. Now, you're going to pay a little bit for that bike, but at the end of the day, it's a six-speed transmission, and it will get out, and it'll do the business. Last but not least, I'm probably going to throw a lot of people for a loop on this one because you're not going to see this one coming from me. But I've seen so much about this bike, and it doesn't get talked about a whole lot. And I'm hoping I'll get some chime in from some people on this bike because it's just really, I, it's, I call it the tat killer, the Trans-American Trail killer. Lots of guys love these bikes. Tons of upgrade kits to turn these bikes into crazy, cool off-road adventure bikes is the Honda CB500X. If you own one, down below, man, put it in there and let people know why you love it and what it is and why you have it. It's really pretty fantastic. So, but with that being said, 434 pounds. It's got a six-speed transmission. It basically holds 4.7 gallons of fuel. That's pretty darn good for that bike. Low seat height, so it's good for all riders. 19 inch, 17 inch, basically wheel selection, which is just like with all your BMWs and some of your Suzuki's like your V-Stroms and your Versus. Really pretty fantastic. But those are five I totally feel are really the best adventure bikes that you can just get off road. Now I can't do all of them because you guys will yell at me. But those are the five best that I feel. Put it down below what you think is the best and see if I got it right. Don't forget, hit that subscribe button, give us a thumbs up, be part of 690 ADV, and also, don't forget, 690ADV at gmail.com, hit me up anytime. I'll get back with you on that email. You guys have a great weekend. Thank you so much for being a part of it and actually tuning in. We'll see you next Friday, 690 out.